It's Money Monday, a segment here at 4 o'clock where we talk about easy to understand ways to navigate our finances. Here to help us, financial expert Paul Hood from Hood CPAs. Uh, gosh, Paul, it is fantastic to see you in person. I know. I haven't seen you since March. Yeah, How are you doing? It's like we're starting our first date, right? I know. <laughs> right? Date, right? I know. Yeah. We got our distance between us. <laughs> it's good to see you. And we you have too. some really great questions uh, today. These are your questions. We're going to need them answered right now. Uh, let's jump in. We'll start with Whitney. Whitney says, I'm going through a divorce and we're trying to do it without involving attorneys. How do I measure? Uh, what I actually am supposed to get versus emotional greed. Thoughts, Paul? Yeah, so, you know, they're really, in, in Oklahoma, whether you agree with it or not, it's a no-fault state uh, for divorce, and typically anything that's, that's accumulated during the marriage is considered marital estate, and typically it's 50-50. Um, I would encourage them to seek some sort of advice, even if they go to one attorney, to make sure that legally things get spelled out right, because it's, it's especially if there's kids, um, the tax side of things, and then, you know, down the road they're going to remarry probably if they're going to go through this divorce, and you want to make sure things that are, are decided not only for today but in the future. So I would encourage them to go ahead and get some, and sort, of counsel. Get some sort of counsel. Okay, good, good advice, Paul. Uh, Liam, I love this question. Liam mm -hmm. writes in and he says, I'm 15 years old, go, just Liam. started my first job mowing lawns. Gosh, I remember that. Uh, what should I be doing with the money that I'm making to save it to get my first car or to help pay for college? I love the question. I love the fact that he's asking the question, Brian because see um, actions create habits and habits create you know your long-term outlook so um, what I would encourage him to do is save 10 percent um, regardless and and then you know over and above that save more for the car or for the different things down the road but that first 10 percent is untouchable it's for the future um, and and then uh, you know, with him being 15, surely his parents are paying for most everything, and so everything that he would spend it on would be for, you know, a luxury or, or you know, just frugal type things. Um, so I would save almost all of it if he could and milk the, the parents, have them, you know, <laughs> make sure they keep paying for things and just save it all for that yeah, car. That's my advice, too. If you're moving away to college, that's one thing. If not, just stay home as just long as you can. stay home as you can. I'd still live yeah, at home if I could. I'd move home. <laughs> me, too. Support right. me, Mom. Uh, last question goes to CJ. Uh, CJ has a question I think a lot of people are going to relate to, Paul. Uh, my wife and I, we have seven kids. Maybe not that part, but mm. gosh, that's a lot. That's a big household. Uh, between the two of us, we all live under one roof, and they're all involved in sports and extracurricular activities, from horseback riding, gymnastics, baseball, private music lessons, really takes a big bite out of our budget, but we hate to scale back. How do we balance our income and these activities? Well, I would ask them why they say they hate to scale back and what does scale back look like. Um, you know, we've talked a lot, Brian, about success in life, whether it's in your marriage or in your finances, your fitness or whatever, uh, is being intentional. And so sometimes you have to make, you know, decisions on where we're going to do this, but not that. And you know, sometimes parents think that they're depriving their kids if they say no. Well, you got to say no. So the first thing is, is that you owe it to them as a parent is to make sure you're making good financial decisions. So same old thing, save 10% no matter what, live on 70 to 80% of what you make, and, and whatever fits in that, that category and that cash flow, make it work. And then let the kids prioritize, get them involved in making that decision so that the parents don't feel like I'm just depriving my kids. But they don't have to do everything, Brian. You know that. I mean, it's, it's good to do some things, but you don't have to do everything. And involving your kids help too, then they're yeah. not resentful. So Absolutely. That's, that's really good advice. All right, if you're watching right now and you have a question that you would like us to consider for Paul for next week, all you have to do is just send in a quick email to moneymonday at griffin.news. Paul, thanks.